couple more hours with his daughter. Um, he dropped her off and he came back up there and he got me. So by this time, I was comfortable enough to go back with him to his place um, because we did spend the whole night together and he didn't give me no scary type of vibes, you know, his energy was great. And at this point, I just felt like he was my tall, dark and handsome, my knight in shining armor. I felt protected in his presence. So I felt like he could protect me and he wasn't gonna let nothing happen to me. So he ended up coming back to get me. And again, he was standing outside the car waiting to open the door for me. I already knew that we was locked. We was locked in. So um, I get in the car, we go, we driving back down the highway, going to his house. So as we driving down the highway, he's telling me, he's like, yeah, I got a roommate. Um, he got a woman and they just had this big argument or whatever, they was fighting and the dude put the girl out so there's no drama no drama or nothing at his house so i'm like okay cool as we get to his city he he says look i want to make a stop i want to get some marijuana so i'm like okay cool his city is like number one the crime rate um so he pulls into this known project that it's got a high crime rate in it. And that's red flag number one. Like, you this type of man, why are you pulling into this neighborhood to buy marijuana? You feel me? I'm thinking you should be somewhere up in the hills or the suburbs buying your marijuana from, you know, a guy's stature. So, as he get back in the car, I voice my opinion. I let him know how I feel. I said, I don't think you should be out here in this neighborhood buying marijuana at the, you know, certain hours. Cause I said, it's not safe over here. And he took that in consideration. He was like, yeah, I feel you. I won't do it again. So I'm like, okay, because I really didn't. I, me personally, I didn't want to be in that neighborhood. And I didn't want him to be in that neighborhood, even though he was, yeah. So he, we, he gets back in the car, we go to his place, and he had a nice little apartment. It was comfortable, it was clean. It smelled good or whatever. In the beginning. Y'all know how y'all invite somebody to y'all place and y'all try to clean up and make it smell good? I'm assuming that's what he did. So we gets back to his place, um, and I just, it's like I instantly felt right at home. I just, like I said, I felt protected. I felt safe with him. I felt like I was in my safe haven. So anyway, we there chilling, you know, still getting to know each other. And um, I was telling him about my YouTube channel. Well, I already told him about my YouTube channel because he saw my camera and I told him I was a vlogger. So I was telling him more about my YouTube channel and I was telling him how to do pranks, skits, um, vlogs, um, story times, and you know, so on. And he agreed to all that. He said he liked those type of things as well. After all, he was um he was on tour with this big um this big gospel singing group. So he's basically used to being filmed he's basically used to being recorded singing and you know all that good stuff so um he was like well if you want to make some videos we can i said okay so as soon as he said that i started pranking him so we did here at his house he accommodated me like to the utmost like he saw he saw me look sitting back on the bed he said oh you need a pillow um, he saw me wanting to edit my video because I had brought my computer. Oh, you need a table? So it, it was like he was on his best behavior. He was like really accommodating me. He was catering to me. And I was like, oh, okay, my knight in shining armor. In my eyes, he was the perfect man. And he just like fell into my lap. He was like an angel that fell out of the sky. Matter of fact, I was editing my auntie's funeral and he, he was so impressed by my editing skills, he sat beside me and, you know, watched me edit and, you know, and even he put it, put in some, he put in some input. So he was better in my skills and I was better in his skills. So it was like we was pouring into each other. Um, but yeah, I was just basically editing my video. 
he was telling me his stories. I was telling him some of my stories and how um, he just like basically fell into my lap. And I was just so glad, you know, to finally have a big, strong, black, healthy man. Um, he was teaching me like little exercises that I could do. He was persuading me to eat healthier. He was showing me all his healthy foods. He was telling me about um, his diet that he was on. Um, he had this bar that you could pull up on. He was basically trying to teach me how to use my upper body strength because your girl do not have no upper body strength. Not right now, but I am gaining that as we speak. But he was teaching me, you know, some exercise tricks and trades. So, like I said, we were just vibing, cooling that night. Fell asleep. Woke up the next morning. At seven, so he woke up and he brought me back up here to Richmond because he had to go to work. And plus, I also had to go to work like at... I think I know I had like a night shift no I had an early morning shift as well so he woke me up and then he also he worked in Richmond too so it wasn't a big problem we both had to be to work at seven so he dropped me off at work and then he headed to work um, but the only thing with me is I think he got off at three listen to this what I'm about to say so we both at work, you know, we texting. He's like, I can't wait to see you again. I think I'm already in love with you. And I really didn't know how to accept that or take that because it was too soon. It like, it was really too soon for him to be telling me that he loved me and so I was just like, oh, I didn't never told him that I loved him back. I was just like, oh, that is so nice of you. You know, saying something sweet and kind back instead of saying I love you back. He was like, oh, I love you. I think I love you. He said, I think I love you. He was like, no, I love you. Um, I want to be with you. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. I don't want nobody else to have you. I want you to be all mine. So I'm like. Oh, that's so sweet and nice. I said, you're such a gentleman. Because I really didn't know what to say. He was like, um, well, once you get off, are you coming back with me? I said, yeah. Because he got off at 3. I got off. Yeah, I got off. I was initially supposed to get off at 4. But I didn't get off at 4. I got off like around 2 o'clock, 2.15 like that. So I ended up going over the city trend. I bought me a couple of outfits. I bought me some brand new bras, socks, underwears. And I brought me like these little cute little, um, they look like Crocs, but they was like a plastic material. And I bought me those and I went back over to the job and I waited for him to the job. And he picked me up and when I got in the car, he was like, oh, I see you was out spending money, doing a little bit shopping. And just the way he said it, kind of like, hmm, that mean. So I really didn't think none of it, so. Anyway, we get in the car. Well, I get in the car and we pause off. And he asks me, do you need anything before we leave Richmond? He said, do you need to go to back to your, your, your house to get anything before we leave Richmond? I said, no, that's why I grabbed these things so I won't have to go back to the house. So as we driving back down the highway, He said, I don't want to rush nothing. He said, I want to take our time to get to know each other. And I was like, okay, that's cool with me. We can just take our time to get to know each other. And then we driving down the highway. As soon as we get like 10 minutes out from his city, he said, you my girl now. He said, because I want a relationship with you. So you my girl now. So I'm thinking, I, I, I'm just thinking, I never say anything to him. I'm thinking like, he just said that he didn't want to rush anything. So he just wanted to be friends. I should have took that as a, well, that was a red side, but I should have thought more into that. So he instantly basically just made me his girlfriend. Um, so we get to his city, we get back to his house. Um, but before we get to the house, we stopped at Food Line. That was his favorite spot. 
So we stopped at Food Line. Um, he picks up some groceries or whatever because he said he was going to cook for me. So we stopped at Food Line, pick up some groceries, then we go back to his house and, you know, we get situated and comfortable. And um, I lays out, you know, what I just bought. And I bought a nightgown too. So I lay out my stuff that I just bought and my underwear, my socks, my bras. I lays out in the bed because I was going to... Um, go take a shower, you know, because I was fresh off of work and I wanted, you know, to get the sweat off me. So, I lay my stuff out on the bed. I go get in the shower or whatever and um, get out the shower, put my clothes on, goes in the kitchen and whatever he was cooking, it was smelling good. I forgot what it was, but nine times out of ten, it was like some turkey because that's all he ate was like um, turkey. He didn't eat pork, he didn't eat beef, he just ate like turkey, rice, and like some type of vegetable. So, whatever he was making, it smelled good. I think he made like some turkey burgers and some baked fries or something, I don't know. Some sweet potato fries, cause that's, that's he didn't eat the, the regular potato, he only ate sweet potatoes. So, um, yeah, so we sit down, we eat, and, like I said, he was catering to me, you know, accommodating my every need, and we eat. We sit in the living room, we watch TV, laugh, joke, and then we went and got in the bed. And um, he was telling me that he loved me, he cared about me so much, and he don't want me to leave, and his home is my home, and he gave me a key that night too. Um, so nothing really spectacular happened that night. So we wakes up, um, he gets, he gets a, um, a text message. He woke up to a text message from a church saying that they's having this big gospel concert this Sunday and they would love for him to come be one of his special guests. They would like for him to perform. So I said, dang, we, I got to work. He said, you don't work there no more. I said, what you mean? He said, you don't work there no more. You ain't got to go. I got you. So I said, okay. Okay. So I guess I, I didn't work no more. So um, he ended up going to work that day. We talked that whole day. He was at work. This is when the bulls start happening. We talked that whole day at work. I'm talking about all day day at work. I said, where you at? What you working? What you doing? He really didn't tell me what type of work he did. Only thing he told me that, only thing he told me was he spent majority of the time in his office and he oversee the workers. So I said, okay. So um, I said, okay. But anyway, we talking. He like, did you get yourself something to eat? I said, yeah, I ate. I went in there and cooked me some eggs. And um, it was time for him to get off. And when he got off, I I didn't hear from him. It was like he went missing. He took a missing. He went ghost. So I'm like, dang, where he at? You know. So I'm calling him, texting him, no response. He not texting back. He not calling back until I guess I was calling him too much or whatever he was doing, he was finished doing, he called back, he said, oh, hey, babe, I'm sorry, I was just out paying bills, I got caught up with paying bills, so I'm like, okay, okay, so he said, I'm on my way home now, but he came, but he, it took him like another hour to get there, so I'm like, Okay, so eventually when he got the, when he got home, he um he came home and he jumped in the shower. Okay, I I I mean I I'm not gonna say I ain't think nothing of it of it. I just ain't stress it. I'm just like, hmm, cause. We all know what that means, but you know, I didn't want to think the worst. 
I, I, I didn't want to think the worst. So he came home, we jumped in the shower. And I'm like, okay, so he came in the room, lotioned up or whatever. So I said, how was work? And he was saying it was good. It was all right there. They stressed him out. But overall, it was a good day. So um, he said, you ain't, you, ain't, you ain't fixed no dinner? I said, mm, <laughs> no, because I, I didn't. I didn't fix dinner. I said, well, you got that spinach and cheese piece in there. You want me to go put it in the oven? He was like, yeah, go put that in the oven. So I went in there, in there and put the spinach and cheese pizza in the oven. And that's what we had for dinner, spinach and cheese pizza. So we in there, mind you, he never, he never, like when he was with me, he was never like just in his phone. I was always the one that was constantly in my phone, in my phone, in my phone. I was just always in my phone. It's like, you can be watching a movie, but I'm not watching a movie because I'm in my phone, but him, He's always watching movie. He was like never in his phone around me. And his phone, he would like, he wouldn't keep it on silent, but he would keep it face down. So I'm like, okay, well that's kind of good. He not in his phone. So the night go on, go on, go on. He was, he was the type of person that he go to bed early because he get up so early. So the night go on, he ends up falling asleep. So I'm still up in my phone. Um, what I would be doing on my phone is like promoting videos, copy and paste, sharing links. Um, I wasn't talking to guys. I wasn't inboxing no guys. And the guys that I was inboxing and talking to prior to him, they all got blocked because I didn't want them to message me, hey, or something like that. And he ended up seeing it and he thinking that I'm entertaining these guys. So they instantly got blocked with me and him. Well, when he made it official with me, so I'm up in my phone, and I guess he didn't like that. So he was like, dang, you still up in your phone? Go to sleep. So he snatched the phone out of my hand and put it on his side of the bed. And I'm like, okay. And I was like, well, maybe it is wrong that, you know, it's like 1 o'clock in the morning, and I'm up in the phone. I should be sleeping laying down with my man. So I guess... I didn't think nothing of it. I just assumed that, yeah, that's right. Let me just go lay down. So I lay down, go to bed. We get up the next morning, and he wakes up with a whole attitude. Like, you cheating on me? I'm like, huh? He said, yeah, because you just be up in your phone all night. Like, what you what you got going in your phone? What's more important in your phone that you can't lay down and go to sleep? I said, there's nothing important in my phone. It's just that, you know, what I do, I, I just, just be promoting stuff. I be on like five, six different apps, copying and pasting and sharing stuff. So we got into like a little small argument, but I don't think it was nothing to really like to be upset about, especially when I know I wasn't doing nothing, you know, sneaky and conniving. I wasn't talking to guys. So at this point, just when I started, you know, when I started thinking about it, I'm like, okay, this is a real man. This man deserves breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So I started making him breakfast. I made him lunch, and when he came home, he always came home to um, dinner. So I got up with him, made him breakfast, um, put it in like little Tupperware bowls, you know, and put it in his lunch bag. And um, as he was leaving for work, he, got, he would always give me a kiss. So he gave me a kiss. And, I see you later. Same thing. We talked all the way through his shift. And when it was time for him to get off, he went ghost on me. I'm like, dang, again, why does this man keep going ghost? And that's when I got this good feeling or that little person on my shoulder was like, he just wants you to be inside the house he wants you to be his main chick he wants you to be his in-house you know and that's all i kept thinking about that's all i kept thinking about I'm like what the hell he got going on why i don't ever hear from him when he get off work he will always say i'm gonna call you when i get in the car i'm gonna call you back when i get in the car and he would never call me back when he got in the car so i'm like what the hell this man up to? So when he did eventually 
answer the phone. Oh, hey, babe, what's up? I'm sorry. I was at Walmart buying oil and buying oil for his car. So I'm like, you be, you, you gonna answer the phone for me? Cause you was at Walmart buying oil for the car. So I was like, okay, well, I'm just glad to hear your voice. I'm glad everything's okay. He said, yeah, babe, I'm good. I'm on my way. Again, it would take another hour for him to get there. Like, what the heck? So that became a repeated cycle. So um, eventually he came to the house, but when he came to the house this time, but when he came to the house this time, he didn't jump straight in the shower. Um, he came home. He said, ooh, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I had a long day at work. And I was like, oh, okay, well, go ahead and, you know, take a load off of rest. And so he got... So when he took, a, he took all his clothes off, mind you, I was, you know, you don't want to take no shower, you fresh off for work. So, um, he came in the house, took his clothes off, he, he didn't even sleep with clothes on. I didn't want to sit here and shoot the coat, but he never slept with clothes on. And he used to get mad at me because I slept with clothes on, like, yeah, so... He came home, took all his clothes off, and then when he went to lay down, y'all know how y'all could smell a person air? He smelled like fresh Dove soap. And he didn't use Dove soap at home. He used it Caress soap. So he, he smelled like a fresh bar of Dove soap. I didn't say anything. I'm like, dang, the hell? I, I'm like, I know I ain't going crazy. Like, this man... Smell like a fresh bar of Dove soap. And he don't even use Dove soap. So, this night, I said, okay, I'm not going to sit up in my phone all night. I am about to watch TV until I fall asleep. Because I don't want to have another episode of the previous night. So, I'm sitting up watching TV. And eventually, I fall asleep. Uh, go to sleep. We wake up the next morning. Same thing, I make him breakfast, I prepare his lunch, and put it all in his lunch bag. Um, same thing, he kissed me, Mwah. see you later babe, take care, have a good day, make sure you eat you a healthy breakfast and a healthy lunch, so I'm like, okay. At this time, I got thoughts running in my head, like, what the hell, I say there's something about this man, and I just can't put my thing on, something about this man. Again, same cycle. We talked his whole shift. Um, we did never miss the beat. Talked to him from as soon as he clocked in until as soon as he clocked out. So this time, he said, all right, boy, I'm going to call you when I get in the car. So I said, okay. So this time, I didn't even call him because at this point, I was so used to him. Oh, he's not going to answer the phone. He's not going to answer the text. Forget it. Let him do what he do. So I didn't call him. So I didn't call him. I didn't text him. I just let him go out there and do the hell. Whatever he was doing, do it in peace. I'm not going to bother him. So he ended up calling me. Like, what you doing? I said, um, nothing. Just sitting here watching TV. Um, did you make dinner? I said, yeah, I made some dinner. You better hurry up and come home. Mind you, he, he got off at three, and this is like an hour and a half after he got off. Well, what you um, doing? That's all nothing, just watching TV. He said, did you make dinner? I said, yeah, I made some dinner. I said, you better hurry up before it get cold, though. He was like, oh, yeah, 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 I'll be there. He said, I'm out running errands, paying bills. Remember, I told you his main three excuses was he's getting oil, he at the car place, or he out running errands, paying bills. I said, okay, so I said, continue paying your bills, because at this point, I'm already thinking in my head, this man got something going on. So, like I said, I didn't call him, he called me. Eventually, he came back to the house, but this time, he came to the house, y'all. And he comes in, he goes straight to the bathroom. 
So I'm 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 just like I'm just a nosy person by nature. So he comes in, he goes straight to the bathroom. And he looks in the mirror, because that's what he was good for, just looking in the mirror, admiring himself. So he looking all in the mirror like this and all like, ooh, I need a shape up, I need a shape up. So he comes in the um, he he goes in the room and get his clipper. And, and I'm following him because you know I miss him for real, for real. And I'm like, I want to ask him like, what what's up with this pattern you got? So he's like, why you following me around? What's up? You okay? You good? What you been doing? Something? Oh, another red flag. So I'm like, oh no, I just missed you. I want to see you. I want to. To be honest, I was trying to get that whiff of that Dove soap smell that I was smelling. So he goes in the mirror. He takes his shirt off. And I lie to you not, this man got fresh scratches on his back. And he got some right here on his chest. And y'all know what them scratches mean. It was like on his back. It was like, you know how you have a sex with a man and you got his back like this and you leave his, yeah. He had scratches on his back and he had scratches on his chest. I saw it, y'all. And I didn't want to start no argument with him, but I wanted to know because like this pattern that you're doing is now is evident. Is you, you you whatever you're doing, you you starting to leave the evidence. So I'm like, what's up? What's up? Why, what's up with these scratches on you? I don't I I didn't have nails. I didn't have my nails on, and I really don't got no real nails. So I know I won't leave any scratches on. I'm like, what's up with these scratches? You got scratches on your back. What's up? Oh man, he blew up. He went teeth off on me. Like I'm the one with the scratches on me. So when he blew up and he and he tried to switch it around on me, like I was starting stuff, when the only thing I was doing was trying to get to the bottom or something, I was like, ooh, yeah, something right about this dude. Something right about this dude. So he shut me up. Yeah, he shut me up. And I just go in the room and just start thinking like, damn, what the fuck did I just get myself into? So I'm just like, dang, I done got myself into something that I don't even know if I can get myself out of. So um, I'm thinking like, damn, what the hell? This man got scratches on his back. He fussing at me. Like, I'm the one with the scratches on me. Like, I can't voice my opinion. Oh, my gosh, y'all. So um, I'm going to end this part off right here because it is getting late and i have like two other videos to edit and i don't really want to get emotional because it get deeper it gets like deeper than this and it gets crazier than this and i really don't have enough, enough time to tell it and i really don't want to rush it but guys make sure you like comment subscribe share this video what are you love friends are you love all here friends because i'm i'm funny womack and i'm funny and i got this heartfelt hurtful story time to tell I really want to get this off of my chest because um, I don't want no man after that's going to come after him. I don't want to be, um, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want the next man to have to feel what the other man, you know, like put me through. So I really, 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 really have to get this off my chest because, um, Y'all know that Keisha, not Keisha Cole, K. Michelle song. I need another one to get over the other one, the other one. That do not work because let me tell y'all, I tried to do that, but it didn't work because the other one that I tried to get after the narcissistic ex, I like really hurt him and I showed him like a side of me. I show him, I guess I want to say I show him my traumatic side of me and and I don't want I don't want I don't want the next man to have to go through that. I don't want to run the next man off. Um but the only reason why I got with that other guy was because I tried to get over this one and he was the last guy that you know I had sexual relations with and I and I felt like he still had some type of hold on me. So I wanted to get that hold off of me. So I call myself 
dealing with somebody else, it worked because I was stuck on my ex for like eight months. It was like I was lost, confused. I didn't know what to think. I didn't know how to feel. I was hurt. I'm like, why he he why did he get with me just to treat me like this? And I was just stuck on that for eight months until I met the other guy. And he just took the, the memories, all that, away. So I had to have sex with him to, to get that hold off of me with him, if y'all get what I'm saying. And it works, but it's, it's not always the best solution. So now that... He wasn't the last person that I had sex with anymore. The other guy was the last person that I had sex with. And I'm just done having sex, period. So this last guy, you the lucky one because you're the last man that I'm ever, ever, ever going to have sex with until God sends me a man. So now the narcissistic ex is not the last guy that I had sex with and that's all I wanted. I didn't want that hold on me no more. I didn't want it. So I went off and I had to release some pressure, you know, pressure bust pipes. So anyway, guys, I'm just ranting now. Like, comment, subscribe, share this video with all your little friends and I'm gone. Stay tuned for part four because this gets juicy. Stay tuned because y'all want to hear about the ex-wife and how she helped me get through what I was going through. She really helped me a lot. So shout out to you, girl. I love you and thank you, girl. And we can arrive the book and share that feel of love. I wanna ride the